readers, reviewers, countrymen, lend us your ears. Good morning and welcome to the Brothers Gwyn channel today. Good afternoon. Me, Ed uh, and my brother Will are going to be talking to you about a few books that we've recently absolutely loved. Um, this is a little series we've got going on at the moment um, about books that we have read probably in the last six, seven months that we haven't quite had a chance to talk about. And now um, we're going to gush about them. So number one, I will kick us off today, if that's all right with you, Will, um, will be Mark Lawrence's Prince of Fools. Now, uh, I've been meaning to get to Mark Lawrence's second trilogy after I read The Broken Empire quite a few years ago um, for just absolute yonks. And... I finally got to it and oh my goodness, I mean it's such a complete tonal shift from Prince of Thorns, which I have a lovely special edition behind me somewhere, um, all the way over to Prince of Fools, which is just dripping in humour and good sarcasm. Assistant, you? Yeah, you would be one. Yeah. Um, and it's just absolutely superb. I love this uh, this book because I haven't got to the rest of, of the series yet, um, but it's one I just cannot wait to continue with. Um, our main characters, there's a duo that are just genius. There's a Viking and then kind of a... Um, a cowardly prince um, and they're just so so fun I mean they make you want to play Skyrim um, and that's the, the characters the most are, you can ask for I mean if I've Remember read it. anything that will be similar to Abercrombie then um, Prince Jalen's inner monologue will remind you of Glockter meets Jezel oh um, or maybe you know maybe long, young, young Glockter uh, it, it's just <laughs> fantastic they're a lot of fun Mark Lawrence as always has beautiful prosaic writing um, and a line can just snatch your breath away with how beautiful it was written and how succinct and to the point it is. Um, My Lawrence is a great man as well. He's such a kind, kind gentleman. Uh, and I cannot wait to read more of him because I've been meaning to for a while. I cannot wait to get to ho the Holy Ancestor trilogy. Um, but here we are with Prince of Fools. Book of the Ancestor. Uh, it's going to be a lot of Mark Lawrence on the channel. My first one is very different. It's going to be Old Man Logan. So Wolverine, Old Man Logan. Is as I have not, dark as it gets. I have not read a graphic novel since I was probably 10 when you gave me a Conan graphic novel. Yeah, that's probably shot, a bit that beyond my age. Um, uh, but yes, yeah, so I read Wolverine, Old Man Logan. I absolutely adore the film called Logan. Uh, and it was kind of inspired by the tone of this. Mm -hmm. uh, and wow, it is awesome. It is so grimdark. It just subverts every expectation. Any narrative that you expect from it, where they start in a story and I just thought, oh, okay, no, they're then going to get this moment. They're going to get the band back together. Mm. Nope. <laughs> you know nope. how you felt at the end of Infinity War? I mean, spoiler alert, when everyone's dead. Um, yeah, this is how you feel reading Old Man Logan. Right at the beginning. But actually it? worse, because there's actually no hope. Yeah, zero. Um, <laughs> zero hope at all. Um, but it's it's so brilliant. You're really immersed. Um, it's actually really emotional as well. It really engages in how uh, Logan Wolverine has really retreated into himself in the years gone by. Um, and it, somehow he survived and uh, managed to raise a small family. And it's just about that is the whole world to him. That's all yeah. that matters. That he's lost so much. He's been through so much torment and agony and this is all he has left um, and does he want to be dragged back into mm -hmm. um, events but somehow um, it, he does. it goes beyond his own will and he doesn't really have a choice in it and we see him journey across a very bad land and Old Man Logan is just the, the best western ever mm -hmm. written it's not a western artwork. but it kind of is at the same time um, the, and the artwork as you say Will is superb awesome i won't show too much but yeah i'll just show one and yeah i really love this and it piqued my interest in graphic novels and so since then i've been reading one to two a month which um i'll talk about at some point on the channel but um for the moment wolverine i'm and logan and i'll hand back over to you ed thank you will so you know me that i love me some um native american historical fiction i love the sun uh, and other books like that i've been reading lots of joseph marshall the third which who's i a need to read the lakota tribe and ride the wind is absolutely fantastic it, it blows the socks off of me every time uh, i open the book um it it's Is this one, one I discovered... about Barnum parker's mother yeah it's one I, I recently found out about just by trawling through goodreads as you do at three in the morning when you can't sleep and as you, you do. think what what books would i like to read then um, um lucia st Clair robson it has created just a masterpiece here which is about um the girl cynthia Ann parker who in 1836 i believe um was a white girl in Texas was then captured by the Comanche tribe, um, uh, what a Comanche band, and she went on a journey then to kind of be assimilated into that band. 
um, uh, as one of the Comanche. And it's an amazing story. And the, the immersion that you read in this book is just absolutely superb. Really, this is a romance, but you know, it doesn't feel like you're reading a romance. It just feels like you're reading real life. Um, and uh, at the end, I was absolutely weeping. Um, and there are tear stains all over the pages. Uh, I have to get a new version of this book. So probably a good tactic by Lucia St. Clair to actually, you know, write Double a book of this. Because, yeah, exactly. You, should, you have to buy two books to actually read it again. Um, but it's amazing. It's, you know, I love reading about um, the Comanche and, and other bands like that as well. And it's just fantastic. You read about her son, Kwana Parker, um, who's a very, very famous Comanche chief, the last Comanche chief. Um, and it, it was it was wonderful to read. She's got lovely prose, so many historical details that... Um, rather than you feel bogged down with, you feel like they add so much to the story and it feels even more real and you just, it's not romanticised at all the way that they live, but you can't help. Again, like the Amanda Scott Boudicca series, you can't help but fall in love with it. So thank you for this book, Ride the Wind, superb. And next for me, I have got Piranesi by Susanna Clarke, the author of uh, Jonathan Strange and Miss Norell, which is like a thousand pages so this is her second book written many years after and she kind of went for the complete opposite approach a teeny book um compared to what she wrote before i have not read her debut but i have read I this there's no goat men in um dr strange and mr Norman. i have no idea i've not read it as dr. So strange. i cannot comment dr strange John um strange. Yes, Piranesi is absolutely brilliant. I can't actually go into detail about what happens because that spoils everything. Um, I think really the point of Piranesi is you go into this blindfolded, you have no idea what's going to happen, and you just let it take you on a journey. It's incredibly unique, where it feels epic, but it's not. It feels really fantastical at the same time it's not. It's fantasy. It's, it's so much all merged into one book and uh, it feels just like every single word whilst being really natural and not jarring at all it just feels like it has it's the intention of that word it's there for a reason um, and then all these words come together to craft just an amazing story and it's one that really just gripped me I, I, I really I was, just, I was really confused a lot of the time but not in a bad way it, it, it confused in the sense of I have no idea where this is going this is completely not linear um, and you know it's so it's so odd and strange as to what you're used to reading that you yeah. can't even guess what's going to happen next yeah i think most books nowadays you kind of know the general direction is going to go into for it to be commercial or not like that and that doesn't mean that they're not enjoyable they really and most of them really are um but it was just really refreshing having something completely different so this is an epistolary form so it's written um it's formed through a lot of diary and what did you call me epistolary means diary so um well, um, so this is a compilation of diary entries from one man and he is stuck in a house um, with thousands of statues and many, many corridors. And uh, there's one other man who lives with him, um, but he doesn't really know much about the outside world. And uh, maybe he'll learn a thing or two as this book unfolds. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, the third one for me is oh, was an absolute treat to read, and it's Beyond Redemption by Michael Fletcher. Um, I know that Michael Fletcher is a great guy. I've spoken to him a few times on uh, social media. I know that Dad's spoken to him in a few uh, interviews and, and talks with him um, uh, on Jed Han's channel as well, which is great fun. Uh, definitely go check oh, okay, that out. Yeah. Uh, but Michael Fletcher, I mean, always known as kind of the king of Grimdark as well, isn't he? You know, yeah, probably he might be Lord of Grimdark, but Michael Fletcher, I've seen on Mark Lawrence's Grimdark rating that um, Michael Fletcher is the top of the ranking there um, by quite a long shot as well. So I thought, I love me some Grimdark, so I've got to read this at some point. And oh my goodness, it's not what I expected whatsoever. It's absolutely hilarious. It, it had me laughing on my car journey so many times out loud. I looked like a right weirdo as I drove past people, um, just cackling to myself. But there's Michael Fletcher's writing is brilliant. Um, and the central trio, who are really not good people at all. They don't like each other at all. And they're very confused when they kind of think positive things. Um, it's just written so so brilliantly. The characters are just um, so believable as well, although I really wouldn't want to meet them and I hope there's not people out in the world like this because they're just utterly awful people. Um, but you can't help but just enjoy the ride as you're you're seeing what they're going through and all of the carnage they create and all of the awful deeds that they do that are just really funny. Most of the time they do by accident as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I won't say any more about the plot to be honest because it's something that really surprised me and that I loved about it, so I don't want to... Um, Has it got a bit of a Kings of the Wild vibe or not? Um, 
Or was it a very different type of humour? Not really, but oh yeah, the humour completely different. Um, yeah, very different to Kings of the Wild, but um, yeah, it, it's it's I don't I can't describe the humour really. It's just very snarky, like a bit of Joe Abercrombie esque, where you hear what's in their minds, and also the contrast. Yeah, there's a, there's a, I'll right. tell you one thing: is a character who his, his vow is to be the greatest swordsman in the world. So wherever he goes with this trio, it's a bit like Dungeons and Dragons kind of feel with it. Oh, okay. They go village to village and that kind of thing, and they go place to place. Um, he has to challenge the the person who's the best swordsman in that village to try and kill them, and it's just it gets so funny eventually. And he, you know, he's he's very self aware and all that kind of thing. And it, it's it's really well written. And um, yeah, Michael Fletcher is a great guy. Uh, I'm really looking forward to carrying on this series. But yeah, check it out. Go look at it on Goodreads. Got some fantastic reviews that will explain why it's so good in a much better way than I have done right now. But yeah. Right, so now to my third of the four books I'll be talking about today, and that is Lionheart by Ben Kane. So this is the first book I've read by Ben Kane. Somehow, uh, we love historical fiction. Mm, I've I love Ben Kane, but I need to. Um, and he's written. He's one of the most well-known authors to have uh, written about ancient Rome. Mm. Um, but this is actually a ser- I think it's set in eleven seventy-nine. Let me check. Eleven seventy-nine. I checked before this video. Cool. That is an old book. Good joke, Ed. Um, uh, yes, it is set in 1179 and it's called Lionheart because we see the events and the rise of Richard the Lionheart, the very, very, very famous historical figure. Uh, we often associate him with Robin Hood and the Crusades um, because there's a bit of an indirect link in Robin Hood. And he's actually, um, he's casted in the Russell Crowe Ridley Scott film, Robin Hood, isn't he? Um, yes, yeah, so... You follow a character who witnesses a lot of the events, and he's close by, uh, close to Richard the Lionheart. Um, and it's a, it's a, we're taking through the character's formative years. Uh, I'll give a bit of a premise. So this character, his family, he lives in Ireland, um, and his family kind of taken over by Richard and all the powers. His, Richard's father and uh, the group of English nobles, basically, and he is taken as hostage as an insurance that his family won't rise up again. So then he's put into a completely different world. He's very isolated. He's alone. He's got no friends. He's seen as a bit of an outsider. And it's a bit how he struggles and learns to be quite... Um, he's he's very self-aware, but he, he has to be cold at times to mm. survive. And it's a lot about that. And then it leads into how he blend, it gets up the ranks um, and gets to be very close to Richard the Lionheart. And this is nice. the first book of a... I'm not, I think it... It's going to be a trilogy. Book three is not out yet. I have read the sequel, Crusader, which is also brilliant. But I want to talk about Lionheart as it's the first of the series. Um, and I just love... Uh, Crusader is brilliant, but I love being taken through those formative years. I Some love it growing too. up. Yeah, like um, uh, Bernard Cornwell's Saxon stories. I love it when Uther is young because yeah. how he rises from nothing. I love it when a character has nothing and they mm. go from nothing to... Having something, yeah, you, you just know. get so much growth, don't you? Yeah. And I think that you feel they really flounder a bit, and I it's, like seeing that. I think it's a bit of a cheat code as well with um, with authors that when you follow someone through childhood, uh, you just feel a lot closer to them, don't yeah. you? I think you feel a bit more protective as well because you know what they've gone through um, their whole life, basically. And yeah. so, yeah, I've really enjoyed Lionheart. Historical fiction, brilliantly written, excellent prose. Um, and I listened to this on Audible, and it was narrated by Philip Stevens, who is Our incredible. favourite narrator. Yeah. yeah, so this was wonderful. Very nice. And here, talking of Philip Stevens, who has narrated lots of Viking historical fiction, um, we're going to go to Charles Christians. Such as Charles Christians. We're going to go over to a non-fiction here, which is called River Kings by um, Kat Yarman or Jarman. I, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but this is fantastic. I'm a Viking reenactor, so I absolutely love uh, reading non-fiction about this period, the Dark Age, the early medieval uh, period, and now River Kings. You know, there's a lot of non-fiction out there that talk about the the Vikings and their culture and um, and they give kind of a history and a synopsis and they give their opinions and that kind of stuff. River Kings is a completely different non-fiction that we, you will ever read because um, the author is an archaeologist and she is involved in lots of digs. She's And each chapter in this book focuses on one single artefact that she has found and studied and she comes up with the whole history behind it. She talks about um, everything so in depth about the artifact, the implications for past, present and future um, that it has on the Viking world and the worlds and the cultures around it. And it's just brilliant. And basically the artifacts she, she chooses to focus on is a very clever way of talking about basically the whole of the Viking Age um, through all of, you know, they're not just in England. 
um, in Scandinavia, in the Middle East. So well. you really get the full picture. Oh, absolutely. And you see the enormity that the Vikings, the, the kind of impact and the ripple that they had um, on culture and civilizations going from, um, you know, the early Vendor period up until now. So it, it's, it's fantastic to read. Um, I mean, I think Bernard Cornwell is actually on this saying an astonishing and compelling triumph. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's a great, Bernard great book. But if you want to read a non-fiction that, you know, where you really get behind um, who the Vikings were as a people, then um, check out this and definitely Neil Price's Children of Ash and Elm as well. So, yeah, check this out. Well, we're back and dinner was delicious, in case you're wondering. But we're ready to talk some more books. And so this is the last one we will be talking about today with our new favourite books. And this is Where Blood Runs Cold by Giles Christian. He is an incredible author. He's very no well known for his historical fiction. Mm -hmm. He's written an Arthurian um, uh, series, uh, two instalments in that so far. And he's two also trilogies. trilogies. Viking trilogies. Yes, he has, indeed, yo. And this is di completely different genre, contemporary mystery thriller. It is set in Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. It is very cold. Um, so it is set in, I forgot what part of Scandinavia, but basically there's a blizzard, there's a storm, um, and a mother and daughter are witnesses to a crime, and they go on the run, and they're in this blizzard, and Giles Christian, have to say, does a very good job of making you feel cold, but on top of that, feel incredibly tense, and it really just hones in on the main theme is what a parent would do for their child. Um, and in that way, it's really impactful. It's very emotional throughout. Um, and you can feel it, Giles Christian seems like he, he, it's a bit of a, le a letter perhaps to his children mm. that this is what he would do for them. This is what being a parent is. And so, yeah, it's a really impactful and emotional uh, tale, but one with a lot of mystery that is very uh, tense and there's a lot of um, suspense as well. And it's just really enjoyable from beginning to end. See, when I read the synopsis for this, I was like, no swords. What, what's, what's that about? There's enough violence um, in there, though. Is there? So, was it? Is it good that he's kind of moved away from the historical fiction? Is it? Was it a good choice? Well, I think that um, it it shows that he's very versatile. That he can write yes. in this genre very well. He fits in perfectly. Um, I do love. I would love some more. Uh, Viking theme trilogies mm -hmm. and some Arthurian ones, but I'd love to read some more of these as well. I Excellent. think it just shows, as well as Hellmouth, he wrote a novella which is medieval mm -hmm. um, horror, That's great historical fiction, incredible. Uh, definitely listen to the audio book narration of that; it's incredible. Uh, narrated yeah, by Philip, Philip Stevens, who we've already talked about uh, quite a, a few bit times today. Scary, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I remember Jimmy Nuts um, uh, read that, listened to it a few months ago, and he said that it completely just. Blew him away how amazing it was. But we're talking about where blood runs cold. Well, I am anyway. And I really, really enjoyed it. It's one of my new favourites. And yeah, just, again, just show me the skill that Giles Christian has with his poetic prose. Uh, really compelling characters and just a really engaging plot. So Very there nice. we go. Thank you, Will. So they are all the books we talked about today for yes, each. Uh, four more new favourites from each brother. And so, yes, thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have you read any of these? Have we intrigued you with any of these? Have you read any Mark Lawrence, any historical fiction that has been written by Giles Christian? Have you read his new book? So many questions. Answer them in the comments. We'll be looking forward to answering those and engaging with you. And if you I, want... would be, I would be interested to know if many of the people who watch this video read genres that are, are not only fantasy. Do you mm. read any other genres? Historical fiction, you know that we love that. Yeah. A bit of non-fiction. If you do read non-fiction, what periods do you like to read about? Is it about um, World War Two or anything, or vice versa? Yeah, because as you can tell, we really read through a lot of different genres. We just we're, we're mood readers, aren't we? Um, and so we just take what takes our fancy at the time, and there's quite a wide breadth. Um, oh, and it's so annoying being a mood reader because you try and put a list of our oh, TBR together. What's next on the list? And then literally by the time you finished your book. You've changed your My Goodreads list of 670 books to read is testament to that. Um, but yes, if you're not already and you want to follow more of our content, please subscribe. But um, other than that, thank you for watching. Hope you thank enjoyed. You. Truth and Courage, The Brothers Gwyn. Truth and Courage from The Brothers Gwyn.